In this video, we're going to show how we can use bacteria that express bioluminescence and how we can use those bacteria in antimicrobial studies to show the effect and activity of the antimicrobials in real time without having to cull the larvae. In the previous videos, we've shown how we can assess the LD50 of a pathogen and we've also shown how we can assess activity of antimicrobials. Here, we have engineered escape pathogens, including Acinetobacter baumannii, E. coli, and Klebsiella pneumoniae, to express lux constitutively. We can then inject larvae with these lux-expressing bacteria, co-inject with antibiotics, and in real time, we can assess the progress of the infection by measuring the output of bioluminescence. The larvae are alive for imaging, so we have designed a bespoke plate that helps to reduce larvae movement when imaging. These plates hold 50 larvae and allow you to monitor the bioluminescence and health of individual larvae over a given time course. The time course you decide upon is based around the infection dynamics of your pathogen. For example, Acinetobacter baumannii has to be monitored hourly for at least five hours post-infection, whereas Pseudomonas aeruginosa must be monitored after 18 hours. If you are using a bioluminescent strain not supplied by Biosystems Technology, then you will need to do experiments to determine your time course and when best to image your larvae, depending on the infection dynamics of your strain. For imaging larvae, you will need an imager capable of taking chemiluminescence images that has the ability to have a long exposure time. We have used the Biorads ChemiDoc and the Syngene G-Box with great success. When imaging the larvae, you start by taking your bioluminescence images. We use a defined exposure time of 10 seconds and 300 seconds. You can see from these images that we have detected bioluminescent bacteria within the larvae. It is important that after taking the bioluminescence images, you take a bright field image of your plates before you move it. This is necessary for image analysis. Here you can see the bright field image. You will now have at least two images, a bioluminescence image and a bright field image. The bioluminescence image needs to be overlaid on the bright field for well detection. Biosystems Technology are developing software to automatically analyse your images. Here we can see on the bright field image that the software has detected the plates and each individual well. This is then used to analyse your bioluminescence image. Bioluminescence gives a clear visual indication of infection. Here we have created a heat map of the infection in the larvae based on bioluminescence intensity. As you can see, the larvae infected with bioluminescent pseudomonas are visible, whereas larvae that have been treated with tobramycin have no bioluminescent signal. Using the TrueLarve Galeria melanella bioluminescence method, we can observe the activity of drugs in real time. For example, here we have a pseudomonas infection progressing over time, but the larvae that have been treated with tobramycin do not develop an established infection. Those larvae infected with pseudomonas all go on to die, but those treated with tobramycin are rescued. In this video, we've shown how we can use bacteria expressing bioluminescence to monitor infection progression in real time. And we can use this system to identify antimicrobials. We have developed these bioluminescent strains and the tools in a Eurostars funded project called Impact2 AMR. If you're interested to learn more about the strains that are available and the platform, then please visit www.impact2amr.com. Thank you.